Welcome to small group tonight. I hope you're having a wonderful time there. I enjoyed our last lesson from Brother Frank Jordan in regards to continuing steadfastly in this To Be Continued series. So that's where I'm following up with tonight in Apostolic Doctrine. My name is Jimmy Leonard, and I'm a, happy to be a part of this teaching series that we're doing right now in our small groups. We are on the University of Central Arkansas's campus. I know there's a lot of different people that have spent some time here on this campus. I've spent some time on this campus. That building directly behind me is where I spent a majority of my time um, in the speech and communications department. And it was a good time. I had some high times and some low times at different, different aspects. But we're going to talk about that in just a few moments. But it's a good time to be here tonight. We're going to start talking about apostolic doctrine, talk about teaching, what's important to us, and why we need to continue that. Look at someone around close to you there and ask them, what's a potato got to do with it? Here we are in a classroom. I spent a lot of time in this room. It was, a, it was some good experiences and some not so good experiences. Maybe didn't study quite hard enough for that test and it made it sweat in here a little bit. But I did spend a lot of time in this classroom. Thank you God for allowing us to teach this lesson right here in this room. I think it's pretty awesome. We're talking about apostolic doctrine tonight. In um, Acts chapter 2 verse uh, 42 is where we were talking about. It says, and they continued steadfastly, Brother Jordan, wonderful job, in the apostles doctrine and that's where I'm going to take off at tonight is at the apostles doctrine to look at that word apostle it simply means very simply one who was sent one sent on a mission so let's remember that that apostle those apostles were sent on a mission one of those that was sent on a mission on a mission all right so then we look at the word doctrine the word doctrine simply put is teaching so we look at people that were sent on a mission teaching, teaching, sharing God's word. This, this book is, has all the information that we need about Apostles Doctrine. Thank you for those who've given me material and helped me out in um, all of that. Uh, make sure I stayed on the right track with Apostles Doctrine. Appreciate you guys. Uh, but looking at that, we have to come to an understanding and be very clear that this Apostles Doctrine is something that we need to take very seriously. Now, we can trust and depend and believe in what uh, took place. You know, John has the, the books, is the Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The Gospels have a depiction of what took place when Christ was here. And then we have the book of Acts where they lived it out. Now, in Luke 24, my dad taught this to me many years ago in Sunday school. He was my Sunday school teacher. And yes, I did get in trouble a little bit in his class. I acted up. But that's beside the point. Um, uh, in Luke chapter 24 and verse 45, it says this, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And it's not just the scriptures, but they understood the uh, Moses, the books of the law. They understood the prophets. They understood everything that they had in their possession at that point in time that was written on scrolls and scribes and all those good things. Jesus opened their understanding to have full knowledge of what those scriptures meant. So that means when we get to the book of Acts and things begin to be lived out by the apostles and we begin to read those words, apostles, doctrine, we can stand assuredly that what we see in those scriptures is true. We can understand that when Peter gets up and he gives that great salvation message, that every part of that message is true because he had a clear understanding of what it was there. I love in Timothy when it tells us to rightly divide God's word. We have to take a look at this scripture and understand that when I hear a a minister speak. I love Pastor Gaddy and I love that he stays in the book and I don't have to worry about what he says. But I also like how he tells me to bring my Bible to church. He tells me to get my Bible out and look at it for myself every now and then. We have to understand what's inside of this book for us to be able to continue in something. We want to continue in good teaching, then we need to continue in the word and what God has for us. Uh, I alluded to something. I don't say this is a low moment in my life, but there was a teaching moment. Dave is behind the camera. Thank you, Dave, for doing this today. He is sitting at the spot that I will forever remember about in this class. Now, the, the class, the, the, the thing that took place here, it was a persuasion class. So we had some debates that went on. Dr. Christie was a great teacher, and she was a good lady. I, I enjoyed her classes. I had her for like three or four classes. I can't remember all I had. But in persuasion, there was a conversation that began one day. There was some students that took one side of the conversation. Me, I took the other side of the conversation. It wasn't nothing that heated. It was just that there was a small exchange that went forth. And when it was all said and done that night, I kind of began to feel like, man, I'm a little hard on them that day today in class. 
So the next day, the next class, it was the, the two days later, so I had two days to think about it. I came in, I apologized to the students. They're like, yeah, whatever, that's okay, cool. And then I apologized to my professor. I was like, I'm sorry, I may have taken a little too far in my side of the conversation. She looked at me and she said something very plainly and very clear to me. She said, Jimmy, you don't have anything to apologize for. You defended your point quite well and you, and you made good sense with what you said, so you don't really have anything to apologize for. If you can back up with fact what you have, then there's no apologies needed. I want to tell you that when we read the book of Acts, we don't have to make apologies for anything that's in there. We don't have to make apologies for the doctrine that we believe. It is good for us to continue in the doctrine that has been taught to us. Now, there's a little something that has taken place around here. We have a great servant leader in the midst of us here at New Life Church. And I, uh, Ashley Smith, thank you for what you're going to understand what I'm about to say. She uh, got caught here a couple of days ago, or a few weeks ago, in the midst of this. We have what's called now, around New Life Church, the potato doctrine. That's what I like to call it. Now, it's not a Bible doctrine. It's not an apostolic doctrine. But let me explain for just a moment. We have a great servant leader, like I said. And she uh, loves to make <laughs> real mashed potatoes, not those funky, funky, funky out-of-the-box ones. And I looked at her, and I said... Wow, you took a lot of time peeling potatoes. You could have been doing something else with that time. I said, that's a lot of work to make real mashed potatoes. Uh, and she stopped me in my tracks, not in front of anyone, but in, in private, and said, let me tell you something about this right quick. I said, all right, lay it on me. So she said, why would I serve boxed potatoes to people in the community when I wouldn't serve them to my own family? When I wouldn't feed you those boxed potatoes, why would I feed them those boxed potatoes? I want to do what I have, then what I can do with excellence. She looked at me again and made me feel about this big when she said this. She said, God loves the people that we feed through these lines more than you and I love each other. His love is so much greater. And if I can show that in any way to, to people in this community, then I want to do that. Now, this isn't to brag on my wife, Miranda, at all. This is not it at all. She just, she kind of preached to me there for a moment. And why I say a potato doctrine is because it's something to be said. I know her background. I know where she's from. She's from the Ozarks, of all places. They cook great food in the Ozarks. Her mom wouldn't dare serve a boxed potato to us or anyone else. So she knows what it means to have really good food. She's a great cook. I love that. You can tell by looking at me I like it. But you you, you got to understand that she had some education that took place in her life in a Sunday school room. She had some experiences that she had over her lifetime in, in, in church services that she understood. Now, while we can't say that the potato doctrine is an apostolic doctrine, it is a product of apostolic doctrine. Because Christ is all through the New Testament telling us to love our neighbors, to find that person that is in need. We hear the parable about going to the highways and the byways and, and to provide and draw and draw them in. That's what happens when you have apostolic doctrine to continue. When we understand that what we read and what we see in this book is to be lived out. A servant's life is one that is willing to give of themselves so that others can have. And that's why apostolic doctrine, that's why doctrine, why teaching is so important for us today, is that we live out what Christ brought to us. No greater way than one to love his brother than to lay down his own life. That's what we read in the scripture. Christ did that for you and I. He loved enough that he gave his only begotten son. That's where we begin. It. That's where it all kicks off at. If you want to know about true apostolic doctrine, it's talking about love. It goes to the essence of it all. When we talk about the apostles and what they knew and what they, they understood, we can see that what Christ taught them is then lived out in the book of Acts. So in conclusion tonight, and looking at this, in uh, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 16, it says this, Take heed to yourselves and to the doctrine continuing in them. It's important for us to continue in doctrine. And this is why I think it, it's so important. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Our lives, our testimony is the key that will unlock another person's door, a prison door possibly, a door of hurting, a door of shame, a door of bitterness, we have the ability to live out God's love in our life, continuing in what the apostles taught us and sharing the gospel to everyone that will listen to us. Woe is unto me if I don't preach the gospel. That's important for us to continue in this and to continue with what God has given us. Thank you for tonight. Hey, it's not over yet. What do you say? Sit back down. Listen to this real quick. 
Well, you thought this was all over. You know, sometimes they play those blooper clips at the end of a at the end of a, a movie or something like that, and they show you some stuff. This is no blooper clip, okay? This is real life. Just this last Thursday night, after we had a good time of some teaching from Brother Sam Berry, who did a wonderful job talking to us about some rocks in our life, we had an opportunity to talk to people about forgiveness. Not only forgiveness, but being having those sins remitted with water baptism. Take a look at this right quick. And remember, this is continuing in apostolic doctrine. <laughs> We're thankful that the decision that you're making tonight yes. and, and what you're doing, I, I want to be, be very sensitive to this. Uh, it's an awesome moment to, to take this in and, and to let this happen in your life. So Praise this God. is a start in a fresh day today. When we come up, I like it. When we come up out of the water, we're new creatures in Christ is what it tells us. So we're doing that. So um, let's pray. And let's ask God to reach down and touch us this moment. God, we thank you for this moment, this time, God. I thank you for what you're doing in lives here at Celebrate Recovery, dear Lord. God, I thank you for your forgiveness that I get to experience, dear Lord. God, I thank you for the word that's been given for me to apply to my life. And when I apply that to my life, I take new steps towards you and what you're doing. Lord. Let it be in this life just as it is, dear God. In Jesus' name, we pray it and believe it to be done. This is going to be a witness of you and your great work, dear God. In the community and the people that are going to see something change in her life, dear God. And we're going to be a witness for you and your great power and your great work in Jesus' name. Believe it to be done in Jesus' name. We're gonna have a warrior come up out of water. Yes, <laughs> I see it. So when you when I, when, I, when I baptize you, I want to bring you up. I, I just want you to, to however you feel like worshiping, let go and just to experience whatever it is you're feeling. If you feel something that comes over you that's not anything you understand, or and you just feel like the, there's something that's gonna come out, of, let that come out of you. That's the presence of God coming through you and working through you. And we'll talk about in more detail later on what, what that really is. But that's the Holy Presence of God coming down. Yes. And if you feel that when you come out of this water and you lift your hands up and you begin to just feel like you're going to say something you don't know, that's okay. Just let that come out. That's the presence of God. That Miranda talked to, is going to talk to us in just the next few weeks about uh, the presence of God coming down and living inside us. And, and that happens. And the initial sign of that is when we say it and talk in a language that we don't even understand. So if you feel that and that happens, I want you to let that go. You're in a safe place and we love you. Yes. And we want God to give you all that he has for you and for you to get everything that you get. If it's in your head, honey, let it out your mouth. Don't swallow it. There you go. All right? So, um, it's coming from an old Catholic. So I'm going I'm to baptize <laughs> Joyce now in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins and obedience to God's word. And we're thankful for that name being applied to our lives. In Jesus' yes. name, I baptize yes. you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the Thank you for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the life. Th